kill team. We are now, live. Remember, <laughs> you don't want to say that we're live right on. What? You like blew into a microphone. Yeah. Well, I was. I wasn't. It's. It's funny because I. I thought I wasn't on the right one, so I, I got the microphone so I can see. <laughs> anyway, move All on. Right. Let's, should we talk about a story or what? Yeah. I thought it might be a good, cool idea. So this, this is Literary Roadhouse, where we read one short story once a week. And I'm Andy. I'm Anise. And I'm Gerald, blowing into microphones. Blowing into microphones, <laughs> Gerald. <laughs> So this week, we read The Dragon Project by Naomi Kritzker. This is about Vivian, a bioengineer who set out to make organs for people. And then it turns out a whole bunch of people did that. And like they don't really need that many organs. So she's like making custom pets and stuff. That's cool. Uh, and then some hedge fund jerk is like, hey, make me a dragon. <clears throat> so she makes him this cool cat looking dragon. And he's like, nah, I want a giant dragon that breathes fire. So she like makes him a bigger drag. He's like, nah, that's dumb. She's like, all right, get out of here. And then later in the news, she finds out the CEO's hedge fund building burns down because they made themselves a giant fire breathing dragon, which was dumb. And then I don't know, they get like cool dragons, mm. but it's neat. It's, it's a cool. Pet story. It's a cat story, and then a dog story, and then a horse story, but with dragons. Mm -hmm. End of the end of the story. Oh, okay. Gerald, was, what did in... you think of the story? <laughs> I was enjoying that little summary. I was expecting it to go on a bit longer for some reason, but I was expecting the story to go a bit longer for some <laughs> reason. But it was a short story. Hey, that's what we read. So that's that's right. It did it. <laughs> you guys are in a mood today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really little... liked this. It was nice and it was sweet. Yeah. But I kept expecting it to do one more thing. And I don't know what the thing was. It's not like it had set me up to do one more thing. Just sort of like the genre made me think it was going to do one more thing. Mm -hmm. And it, it didn't. And it only did the one thing. I was like, oh, that's a nice thing. It was very nice. Yeah, I, th I think that I think that's that's sort of my summary, only in different words. But, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was it was it was sort of interesting, I suppose. But it sort of yeah, it it, it took the idea of, of being able to three D print animals and and stuff, um, and then didn't really go anywhere with it, um, and so it's sort of. Yeah, it trundled, trundled along quite happily, um, and then it finished, and and I sort of quite enjoyed it. But yeah, I, I don't. There's nothing. There's nothing more to it. I don't think than that. I think it's 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 a nice. It's an interesting story. An interesting idea. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same place as you guys. Listening to you guys talk, I realized you know what it is. What we were, what maybe the thing that we were expecting, the one more thing, is some kind of conflict. For the main character we're in vivian's point of view and she's right. not struggling against anything a grumpy customer is not a big deal their business is doing fine they make tiger dogs for rich ladies so they're fine mm -hmm. like so there's no real conflict and she gets a cool dragon cat out of it and her business partner who seems like supportive and nice like there's no there isn't even tension with her business partner uh he gets a dog dragon and then her old friend um, Nadia gets a horse dragon and everyone's happily ever after it. And, you know, yeah, the horse dragon, you know, he breathes out methane and that's bad in California, but you give him some seaweed and, you know, it's okay. So, like, I think that's what it is. There's just no conflict, so you're like, all right. Yep. That's right, nice. and it's like, oh, and then the cat-sized dragon lives in the little apartment and the dog-sized dragon goes to live in the suburbs and the horse dragon lives with the horse girl out in the horse town. Yeah. Square peg goes in square hole. Great, like, right? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Like it's just that's right, no... and it's 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 real nice to have the square peg go in the square hole. Yeah, but I wanted to like struggle about figuring out which hole it goes in first, at least. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, it looked like a square peg, but it was a round peg. Whoa. <laughs> right? Right. I think that's also why maybe the jokey bits were supposed to be funny felt a little flat sometimes. Like it just felt like. 
like yeah. uh, like when the guy is like threatening a lawsuit and then his eyebrows get cinched off and then he's like threatening a personal injury lawsuit that could have been funnier but it wasn't because you're like yeah we we know who this guy is he's a guy who you know if it was the 80s he's got two beepers we got it like you know what i mean like you've set that up <laughs> there's no I, I, I tell you something i did like i i, I did like the writing style the writing voice i like the sort of chatty informal nature and, and the little sort of little jokes that she she tells without them being jokes I, I, that that was nice i mean it's not wasn't laugh out loud funny but it's a little <laughs> little snigger yeah alec was a guy and the guy's name was like bryce or Braden or whatever and i'm like yeah, yeah all right that guy that guy yeah yeah, yeah. or like no the... offense to anyone named bryce but like honestly change your name <laughs> yeah, I'd, 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 like for, for instance, it, when it said, I mean, tiger dogs, I'd, I'd, I'd have a tiger dog. Um, yeah. But I, Why did I think it was off? a hedge, I think it was a hedge fund manager who was starting a new entertainment streaming service, or possibly he was a streaming starting a hedge fund. So that, that, uh, uh, that's sort of amusing. I, I wonder whether this is aimed at or written for a younger audience. Perhaps could have been. She's written a YA novel. Mm -hmm. catfishing it says here so so maybe it's that sort of level mm -hmm. yeah I, I agree that i like the voice because it's a modern person just talking to you so it's the way we all talk especially within our like demographic very online people especially you know so it's it's a voice that we all understand and use ourselves and she's observant so you're seeing things through her observant eyes right like when the freshman guy is like mansplaining DNA to her and he's wrong, like that kind of stuff is like funny. Uh, and we like when stories do that in general, but then you kind of mm. have to do something with that too. So I think that's where it's still like all, all the pieces are there, but yeah, there's no real conflict. Yeah. Her, her, her latest book, Chaos on Catnet, plug, plug, um, came out on Tor, Tor Teen, which is a sort of YA publisher um for for that sort of market so um yeah i think there's there's some sort of clues there so so in that respect i think it, it would it would certainly entertain a, a younger audience mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah yeah i don't Part know me would have been more like whoa because it would, everything would have been novel including those observations about society right like all of that stuff but now we're spoiled we like read amazing short stories all the time so we're just like where's the thing I don't know, though, man. Like, Ursula Le Guin exists. Ursula Le Guin had existed at this, you know? It's like... Okay, but... Well... There's still room for, you know... I guess, UN. but, you know... Also, it's like sci-fi fantasy at the same time. Yeah, like Ursula Le Guin. I know, but... <laughs> yeah. 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 <sighs> Also, do you think Ursula Le Guin is YA, though? Well, no. That wasn't like a category that existed yet, but like that's my sort point, of, right? There's like a whole machine now around YA, and there's like expectations, and I don't think Ursula Le Guin neatly fits in those expectations. And sometimes reading her is a bit dense. Yeah, like, she's not easy. <laughs> like, no, right. I don't well, think that's yeah. what makes it good. No, like I, I, I haven't read all of her prose, but like I know she's written about what is a YA and stuff like that. Like, eh, I don't know. It's the thing where some YA is clearly hacking off parts of itself. I don't feel like that with this story where it's like, oh, I had a good idea and then I dumped it down for these idiot kids. Mm. Mm -hmm. But it's also, you can strive a little more even in YA. I don't know. You can, you can put a couple more twists in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, we don't know that this is YA. It's just right. She's a YA yeah. It's so just we, yeah. yeah. It it just seems it just seems to be for for a, a younger audience and. Yeah. Uh, or it's just a little uh, what do you what do you call it? An a little fluffy treat. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. It is short it's enough that you don't feel like you wasted your time. No, right. Mm -hmm. it's like, ah, no. Yeah. Delightful. Yeah. <laughs> wholesome. It's actually wholesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, yes, it is, isn't it? There's mm -hmm. nothing, um, yeah, there's nothing untoward in there. Apart from Mr. Yeah, Log, the cat dragon is great, he's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, and, and even even the, it sort of dis, destroying her apartment. She's yeah, whatever. It's no big deal. It's, As it's, you do with kittens, really. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. You buy into that, don't you? It's quite cute that that Mr. Long was uh, was helping out uh, Timothy <laughs> when she took him home. That was quite good. And Sweepy, Mr. Long was like the emissary of dragons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also like when Jed, he was like, Timothy is a very good dragon and you don't deserve him. And then he really <laughs> wants to keep Timothy. Like, that's what I'm saying. There's no, co- not even with Jed, not even Jed, who's like supposed to be like the money guy in the business. He still like has like values and cares about his partner and about their work. So like, great. It's so cute. It's very wholesome. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, here's what I don't like. I don't like that more of the lawsuits didn't go anywhere. Like for one, this guy refused delivery of goods twice. Like they could have sued him for breach. <laughs> Yes, you know, yeah, probably the whole process. Right, he signed off on everything. Certainly, there's at least a deposit that he's not getting back. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think having gone through the first one and and not accepted that, then the second one, you'd say, well, pay half up front. Yeah, you streaming Listen, service. Listen, Naomi Christian, we want a legal drama, okay? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, Listen, but is that what everyone wants? No, I'm not interested plausible. in the lawsuits, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be plausible and, and, and yeah. as you know we sort of yeah and he's right as we read it we just think oh why did they just make another one on spec as it were and, and then he said no nah, not having that and you think how could they do that and someone without business sense that's who yeah, yeah. but anyway i don't have much else to say though that's the problem <sighs> Because even the prose, while the voice was nice and is very conversational and very modern, I feel like I need to wait a hundred years before I can look back on how people talk in this period to make comments about it. Because I'm like in it. I'm like, sure. It's somebody who absolutely is talking to me at a coffee shop. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't know who in, uh, discovered water, but we know it wasn't a fish. Hey, oh, I just heard that. <laughs> what? Clever. That's about how you can't tell what you're in when you're in it. Right. Ah. Oh. Perspective. Right. Okay. Very good. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. Say something to pad our episode out. <laughs> Maybe <to> do ratings. <laughs> um, it's not sunny here anymore. It used to be sunny. <laughs> We had a tornado I'm, yesterday. I'm oh. yeah. I'm pretty sure all I ever talk about is the weather. That's that's, that's how we roll over here. I'll keep it literary. We oh, yeah. sorry. once read a Louise Erdrich short story. I think like last year or the year before. It was very good. And now I'm reading a Louise Erdrich novel, The Night Watchman. And it's very very good. And everyone should go read it. <sighs> Makes me want to bring back the monthly podcast just for this book. But like, it was so much more work on top of this. I don't know. Man. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Remember when we read that short story? That was the excerpt of the Harlem Shuffle. Yes, mm-hmm. I finally read got it. around to reading Harlem Shuffle. Mwah, chef kiss. It was great. Chef kiss. <laughs> <clears throat> and like that yeah. one heist from the short story was like the second, like big caper of the novel. In the first part of the novel, there's like three big sweeping mm. acts. Oh, it was lovely. Oh, it was lovely. Oh. Now I'm excited. Remember when we read The Hunter's Wife by Anthony Doerr? Yeah. I bought so yesterday was Independent Bookstore Day, and I went with my friend to an independent bookstore, and I bought two more Anthony Door books, and I bought a Jennifer Egan book because we read Manhattan Beach on the monthly podcast, and we did Black Box, one of her short stories, and I loved it. So they didn't have a visit from the Goon Squad in the store, so I got um, her other book. But yeah, very excited. So basically, wow. I'm basically going into bookstores now and be like, I read their short story, and I read their short story, and I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I choose Excellent. my books now. Well, I'll get you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess it's a funny thing. I, I I sometimes pine for the, the 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 good old days of the monthly monthly novel, but yeah, it's just it's you know when you when you're reading other stuff and doing other things as well, and we're doing the weekly podcast. You just think it became a bit of a a bit of a There's trial. A yeah. I also have a company book club. That's where we're where we're reading the Night wow. Watchman. I got that. I snuck that in to the company book club. Wow. Mm-hmm. With a remote yeah. team, you need activities. That's true. That's good. Yeah, it's a good. Um, it's a good thing to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to, I I used to be in a pub book club, which was great. You met in a pub, you drank, 
you talked to books for a bit and, and then you drank some more. If that pub had a cryptid mascot that you could make on your own, what animal would it be? What would you mash up together? Wow, that's a strange question. Um, Not if the pub was named the Antlered Fish, because then that would be easy. That would be easy. You an Antlered Fish. Was the pub named the Antlered Fish? It was. What was it called? It was called the Victory. Tiger Duck. The, the Victory. <laughs> it was called the. Oh, after the, yeah. That doesn't the boat and stuff. And, that doesn't lead in. So. No, no. It's. It's. That's why I was struggling a bit. So. What's a very victorious animal? <laughs> <laughs> I know, fierce ones, I guess. Tigers, tiger dog, no. An eagle that has laurels always growing out of its head. Ooh. Oh. Oh. That's pretty good. But what grows laurels? She has to like mash things from other animals. No, she can mash them from another plant. I don't know. I guess, yeah. Like some sort okay. of like a cordycep, like a cordycep mashed with a laurel implanted in the eagle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Literary Roadhouse now needs some animal mascot. <clears throat> what would it be? Hey. Hippogriff. Hippogriff. I was thinking hippogriff, honestly. Hippogriff, yes. <laughs> yeah, but not like a real hippogriff. Half hippopotamus. Oh, real one. No. Half grifter. <laughs> <laughs> not a real hippogriff. No, right. right. No. It's the body of a hippopotamus with the upper torso of a of a con man. Mm, I like it. Yeah. Well, it, it, I don't know whether we ought to be associated with with con men. That's that's not a good look, really. <laughs> uh, so you you want a, a sort of if you have the if you go with the hippopotamus, you'd have to go with a, a, someone like a you know a, a a great a great wise sage or something like that. Somebody who. The red and griffin things. What if it was the body of a hippo and the head and torso of an owl? Ooh. But that doesn't make it a griff. I know it doesn't make it a griff, but we can make up whatever we want. So it but could be a hippo, hippo owl. owl. Why not? Hippo, hippo hoot. <clears throat> Something. Owl bears exist. Owl bears do yeah. exist. In fantasy. Oh. No. <laughs> I just I don't want to mislead our ears for like in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I had to look up LARPing. I didn't know what LARPing was. Oh. What? Wow. Well, it just, you know, I'm, I'm old. I don't know this stuff. But you're pretty online. <laughs> pretty. Uh, <laughs> pretty. Uh, do you mean pretty, comma, online? Or do you, mean <laughs> you look I'm good online on a lot. Yeah, but. Yeah, you're but, always snapping for the gram. But. Yeah, gram crackers. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, you gotta snap them in half before you eat them. They call it snapping for the gram, the kids. Like when you make s'mores. Don't listen to him. That's not true. Jeez, oh, what's going on here? <coughs> I stepped, I stepped <laughs> through a gram. different different world. It's uh, Start a campfire the... later and snap for the gram. <laughs> also, I don't think the kids say that anymore. No, I don't know what the kids say. No. See, that's the trouble. Kids change what they, they say. and, and I got, I got a 17-year-old running around. I try and keep up, but it's yeah. pointless. No. You, you never will. You're old, man. Yeah. You're well old. Ah, Should right. we assign like some numbers to this story? Yeah, let's do some numbers. Yeah. <clears throat> numbers. We've had another numbers. podcast. It's a great job. <laughs> Three. Over 20 minutes. That'll do. Okay. Yeah, it was okay. I, I'm four. Four. I liked I, I'm I'm coming with the four. I liked I liked the tone. I liked the story. Yeah. I'm exactly. a four for the exact same reasons. Okay. I would like to give it a three, but there was literally no part of the story I disliked. I just wish there was more of it. So I'm going to give it a four. Wow. Okay. That's, That's true. There's nothing I disliked. Story. Right. As usual everything about it the same. was, oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. And, and yeah, and, and the sort of amusing bits were amusing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Much more. Do you guys yeah. like my new mug? Oh, that's a good mug. Ooh, that's a good mug. Like, mm -hmm. I like I like the sturdy base. Like is that like a is that a twenty ounce mug? Like a big mug. No one knows. No one knows ounces. Oh. Anyway. What is this? I got it at the independent bookstore yesterday. Ooh, good, <laughs> yeah. good, good. How many right. books does it hold? 
know. Did you know that buying books is really expensive sometimes? I get spoiled with the ebook because they're always like a lot cheaper, but I bought one, no, two hard covers and a soft cover, and I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what just happened? But I like sometimes the paper too. I try to balance it out. I don't want everything paper because then I'm killing too many trees, but it's nice. So, hmm. you know, yeah, balance it out. Yeah. All right. So next week, I'm going to get my script up. Okay. Yeah. So next week, we are reading Bettering Myself by Otessa Mashveg. I'm uh, pretty excited because, nuns. I don't know. Nuns. See, nuns. I don't think it's about nuns. I think it just There's has the word nuns. nuns. There's, There's the like word nun. nun. That's too many nuns. Nuns are fine. <laughs> did, did you have a bad experience with nuns, Andy, when yeah. you were a kid? <laughs> Do you want to talk about it on this podcast? <laughs> uh, Twelve years of Catholic school. Yeah. <laughs> Twelve. But did you have any wow. good experiences with nuns? Uh, Don't lie. One of the nuns in colleges was pretty neat. She she picks basketball games. Sister Jean. I think she's still alive. Wow. She's real old now. So that's good. See? Maybe yeah. that's the nun in the story. Well, she was too old to hit you with a ruler anymore. Mm -hmm. Did you actually get hit with rulers for real, though? Yeah, you get it. You get whapped on the knuckle. Wow. Yeah. Nuns. We used, we used to get blackboard wipers thrown at us. That was cool. Oh, yeah. I mean, they'll throw them at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they were good. And and I had I still got the scars. No, I hadn't. I got, <laughs> I, got, I got a ruler over the hand for carving my girlfriend's name in a desk. Oh ho ho! When I was, I, I was, it was junior school, so it'd be about when I was about ten or something. So yeah, that'll yeah. do it. You had a girlfriend at ten, Gerald. Oh well, yeah, but you know, <laughs> very someone, someone I fell in love with, Glenda will be where Glenda will be. Where are you now? I know where her name is, carved into a desk. <laughs> I like this humble brag, Gerald. Oh, my girlfriend when I was ten. All right. <laughs> it was just well, it was, I was talking about corporal punishment. That's all. I thought. <laughs> just, uh, anyway, so there we all are. Right. I next was a late week we're reading. So. Yeah. So next week yeah. we're reading nuns. We're reading nuns. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But before you go read, it's actually not nuns, but sure. <laughs> but before you go read the word <laughs> nun one time in a story and freak out about it. Describe your ideal dragon in our Facebook discussion group, the Literary Roadhouse Readers. And we based our own dragon on a bat. No one thought about that. Why not? If you want wings on a mammal so that it has a warmer personality, why not a bat dragon? And they did that in Mulan, if you think about it. That was like they a bat sized dragon. And that worked out very well. Anyway, leave a review of our bat dragon and podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your pod. We would also like to create an actual hippogriff, as Andy described. Uh, contribute to our weird crypto cryptid breeding and podcast expenses at patreon.com slash literary roadhouse. Every bit helps. And as always, share this podcast with a freshman mansplaining DNA to you. Until next time, read a good story. <laughs> and it's two nuns at least. Oh, nuns plural. One nun, and then it said another nun. So that's two. It's two nuns. Double the horror. Right. All right. It's possible next week's story is all about nuns. I don't think it is, but... <laughs> Look, Gerald gets to freak out if, like, a story says tapas, so... <laughs> Foreign <laughs> words. Oh. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> gets to freak out. <laughs>